lightning, energy in its raw display of power. Lightning strikes can be as powerful as one million volts and reach temperatures of 50,000 degrees. It can't be controlled, and you never know where it will strike. But that's not the case when it comes to the energy sources you work with. These energy sources may be in various forms, but they can be controlled. Think of it like catching lightning in a bottle. Raw power, raw energy, captured and controlled for the moment by a lock and key. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, created the lockout-tagout standard to protect employees from the unexpected startup or release of stored energy from equipment that could harm a worker performing service or maintenance. Employers must have a written, step-by-step -step energy control plan that follows the OSHA standard. Employees need to be familiar with and understand the lockout-tagout plan. We usually think of electricity when we hear the words lockout, tagout. Electrical energy is present in power transmission lines, circuit breakers, motors, and even in devices such as batteries that store electrical energy. There are other types of energy used in the workplace besides electricity. Hydraulic energy is fluid under pressure. Lift trucks are often run by hydraulic energy. Pneumatic energy is air under pressure. Nail guns use this type of energy. Pressurized liquids and gases, including steam and chemicals, are energy sources present in pipes, supply lines, and storage tanks. Many machines use combined energy types. For example, some hydraulic systems use electric motors to run the pumps that create the hydraulic energy. The lockout-tagout standard applies to all of these types of energy, as well as any other hazardous energy source that can cause bodily harm. What do lockout and tagout mean? Both are procedures used to prevent hazardous energy from injuring workers. For lockout, a lock is put on a disconnect switch, circuit breaker, valve handle, or other energy isolating device in the off position. The lock commonly used for lockout is a standard lock with key. However, a combination lock is acceptable as well. For tagout, a written warning tag is placed in the lockout area of the equipment or machine. Tags do not provide the physical restriction of a lock. The OSHA standard allows a tag in the place of a lock only if the tagout provides the equal protection of a lockout. Tags must be made so that if they are exposed to liquids or acids, they can still be read. Tags must have a warning on them that has the same wording and look in order to make them easier to recognize. Tags must be attached securely so that they can't accidentally fall off. All locks and tags must be consistent by color, shape, or size. OSHA considers using a lock safer than just using a tag, and most companies require both lockout and tagout. If only tags are used, extra steps must be taken to prevent the energizing of machinery, such as removing a valve handle or blocking a controlling switch. Employees should be trained in the limitations of the tagout system. It's very important to obey the warnings on tags, especially since they will not physically keep you from turning power on. Your employer will provide all lockout tagout materials needed. These items must be long lasting and not easily removed. Each lock and tag should have some way to identify who it belongs to. Each person may be issued a lock or series of locks. Never lend it to a coworker. Devices used for lockout tagout should be used solely for that purpose and should never be used for anything else. Applying or removing locks and tags can only be done by authorized employees. Never remove someone else's lock or tag. When working with outside contractors, learn their method of lockout tagout as well. Remember, using a lock or tag is a big responsibility. Don't take it lightly. According to OSHA's lockout tagout standard, whenever performing service or maintenance on any machine where an unexpected startup or the release of stored energy could cause injury, lockout tagout procedures must be followed. 
Service and maintenance activities require lockout tagout if the employee is required to remove or bypass a guard or safety device or place any part of his or her body into a machine process point of operation or associated danger zone. Minor adjustments that take place during or are part of normal production are not part of the standard. Sometimes equipment may be de-energized simply by unplugging it. Cords and plugs are exempt from lockout tagout if energy is completely removed by unplugging the source and the plug must be under the exclusive control of the person working on the equipment. The use of a plug lock prevents it from being put into a socket and is a good option. Who are authorized and affected employees? An authorized employee is the one who physically locks and tags out a machine in order to perform service or maintenance. An affected employee is someone who does not actually perform service and maintenance, but may operate the machinery or work in the area where the service or maintenance will be performed. There are six steps to proper lockout tagout. Prepare for shutdown. Shutdown. Isolate energy source. Apply lockout tagout devices. Release stored energy and verify. When preparing to shut down equipment, answer these questions. How many sources of energy does the machine have? And how do I control these sources of energy to completely disable the machine? Before working on any machinery or equipment, be familiar with how it works and how it receives and releases energy. A written procedure or checklist that details the shutdown of the equipment should be available. Turn off the equipment according to procedure. This may involve turning a switch to off or a more complicated method. Ask a supervisor when unsure of any part of the shutdown procedure. Isolating the equipment means finding and isolating every energy source that feeds it. This includes switching circuit breakers off, tracing lines or pipes, throwing disconnects, and capping any secondary sources of energy. Locks and or tags must be applied to all energy isolating equipment, valves and switches to hold them in the off or safe position. Anything that could restore the flow of energy to the work area must be locked out. The use of both locks and tags is preferred. Tags provide information that a lock by itself will not, such as the type of work being done, the estimated work time, and the authorized person who is performing the work. A tag also helps clearly identify that the machine has been locked out. If only the tag out procedure is used, the tag should be placed where the lock would go. If working on a piece of equipment that can't physically be locked out, place a tag as close to the energy isolating device as possible. OSHA now requires any new machinery to come with an energy isolating device that can be locked. OSHA also requires that older equipment being modified or renovated must be upfitted for lockout. So far, we've talked about only one person locking out a piece of equipment. But in reality, there may be times when several people need to lock out a piece of equipment. Your employer has a written procedure detailing how to do this. Generally, in multiple lockouts, OSHA allows one authorized person to lock out each energy source. The key to each lock would be placed in the lockbox then all other authorized persons who will be working on the equipment lock the lockbox shut with their personal locks. No one can get to the keys to unlock the equipment's energy sources until all personnel have removed their locks from the box. This method ensures that each person is protected. True or false? Once locks and tags are placed on energy sources, the worker is safe. The answer is sometimes true and sometimes false. What makes the difference? Some equipment stores up energy, and this is a hazard. To ensure protection, relieve, disconnect, or restrain any hazardous energy that could be present. Check that all moving parts have stopped. Relieve trapped pressure, blank pipe flanges, and block or support elevated equipment. If it's possible that energy might still build up, check it continuously until you have completed servicing or maintenance, or until the hazard no longer exists. Check the steps. Make sure every energy source is shut down, blocked off, controlled, 
and locked or tagged out. Tell everyone in the lockout area that the equipment will be tested to verify that all energy sources have been controlled. Make sure that everyone is away from the area. Press all start buttons, pull all start levers, and try any other activating controls that might restore power to the machine. This includes checking remote computer controls. After checking all power sources, make sure to return them to the off position. This is very important as it prevents the equipment from starting by itself when energy is restored. After verifying that all energy sources are controlled, it is safe to begin work on the equipment. Now let's quickly review the six steps for shutting down and securing energy sources. Step one, prepare for shutdown. Step two, shutdown. Step three, isolate energy source. Step four, apply lockout tagout devices. Step five, release stored energy. Step six, verify. When the work is complete, it's time to safely remove lockout tagout devices and re-energize the equipment. The OSHA standard has three steps that cover this procedure. The first step is to restore the work area to operating conditions. This means ensuring that all tools have been removed from the work area and double checking that all equipment components are in place and in working order. Machines must be operationally intact. It's also important to replace safety features such as machine guards and close any access panels that were opened. Before removing any locks or tags, all affected employees must be told that lockout tagout devices are going to be removed. Employees must also be informed after all lockout tagout devices have been removed. This can be done by gathering everyone together or by a checklist of affected employees. Before removing any devices and before re-energizing equipment, make sure that all employees are safely out of the operating area. After notifying everyone that lockout tagout devices will be removed, begin taking locks and tags off. Each device must be removed by the person who put it on. If the person who placed the device on the equipment is not present, do not remove it yourself. A written energy control procedure will list certain steps to follow for this situation. When re-energizing the equipment, follow the standard procedures. From time to time, check the equipment and the work area during startup to make sure it is still safe. Finally, if there is a machine that is off but has no lock or tag on it, do not assume that it is safe to turn it on. Double check before restoring power to any machine. The OSHA lockout tagout standard requires the employer to inspect the energy control program each year. It describes each machine's energy source and the company's procedure for shutdown, lockout tagout, and restart of equipment. During the inspection, the inspector will ask each authorized employee about their responsibilities under this energy control program. If the inspector has reason to believe that an employee does not have satisfactory knowledge of procedures, that employee will be retrained. Otherwise, retraining is only required whenever there is a change in job assignment, a change in machines, equipment, or processes where a new hazard is present, or when there is a change in procedures. Lockout tagout is such an important safety tool that many employers retrain every year. Make sure to follow the six steps of lockout tagout. Prepare to shut down. Shut down. Isolate energy source. Apply lockout tagout devices release stored energy, and verify. When re-energizing equipment, follow the three steps. Restore, inform, and remove. Skipping any of these steps is not worth the risk. Can lightning be caught in a bottle? At work it can. Controlling the energy source is critical to everyone's safety. <laughs>